cloudburst is very simply a burst of rain. So why it's called a burst? Because uh, it comes down a lot of water coming down from the sky in a very relatively short period of time. So for example, in 10 minutes or 20 minutes when you have uh, lots of water coming down from the cloud. It's a, basically a thunderstorm. So what happens is that when you have lots of air going up uh, very quickly, so then the water in the air will then condense and become big drops and then ice and then so it's called a thunderstorm. So when there's lots of water coming in the, in the thunderstorm, then it comes down uh, in a relatively short period of time. So it looks like a burst. And so that's why it's called a cloudburst. So in, in mountainous areas, uh, one of the additional factor for giving, pushing the air to go up is that when the air comes hitting, hitting a mountain, then the air will be pushed up. So therefore you will have both the heating itself and then the, uh, what we call the orographic forcing, the land, it's, the mountain itself forcing the air to go up. So these two factors add together and therefore would then cause the thunderstorms to develop much faster and stronger. And so when it rains, therefore it will have heavier rain. And the reason why you will have um, landslides and flash floods is because the water comes down so fast that number one, the river cannot sustain that flow rate. And so therefore there will be flash flooding. And number two, the problem with many of the places is that they have a lot of deforestation. So they chop down the trees and so therefore trees have a, a very important uh, function, which is to hold the topsoil. Now, if you chop down all the trees, then what happens is that the, there is no more trees to hold the soil, topsoil. And so when you have heavy rain, then the topsoil gets washed down and therefore you will have landslides. So on a global scale, the reason why we expect to have more heavy rain is because global warming tends to, to allow more water vapor to be present in the atmosphere. And so therefore, when you squeeze the water vapor out, you can get heavier rain. So this is on a global scale because of global warming. On a regional scale, especially in cities, because of the buildings absorbing the sun's energy, the human activities contributing to the heating and the amount of pollutants that are contributing to the, to the cloud condensation, then all these will then contribute towards heavy rain in the cities, especially in mega cities. Heavy rain is very difficult to predict because part of it is because it's random. And secondly, it's because we really have not enough knowledge about all the processes that lead to this heavy rain. So most people, most of the weather centers, when they predict uh, short-term heavy rain is by what we call now casting. So you need to see what's happening now and try to predict what might happen in the next couple of hours. So that in on short term. Now in the long term, we know there will be more chances of heavy rain. So that one we need to think about, uh, imp we need to implement strategies to reduce the possibility of flooding. 